everyone, my name is Ply with Litterboard. I am a co-owner of Rockwave Coffee Roaster in Edmonton, Alberta. As a shop, I help with green sourcing, um, setting up coffee programs, wholesales, um, bringing in different interesting drippers and paper and shipping and, and all kind of different things um, at our roastery. Uh, in my short coffee career, I have won 2019 Aeropress, Canada Aeropress Championship as well as 2020 Canada Brewers Cup as well. So my topic is coffee processing, which is super interesting, super fun, and very challenging at time. Uh, with coffee processing, there's uh, three main coffee process. Um, which we all know as natural honey or, or pop natural and washed. Um, every coffee undergoes some certain type of fermentations, doesn't matter if it's wash, natural, honey. So uh, when you taste coffee, sometimes you'll be able to taste some of these processing as well. For washed coffee, the coffee being fermented whether in dry fermentation and then wash or wet fermentation and then wash. And these coffee are generally going to be cleaner in taste um, compared to honey and compared to natural as well. The natural and uh, honey are going to be a little on the sweeter side, especially um, on the fruit type of sweetness. With um, natural, the coffee, once it's been picked, and then left to dry the fermentation undergoing within the mucilage and then they take out the husk when the coffee is dry and these are going to be a little bit fermenty um, or can be a little bit fermenty they are usually quite sweet com in terms of fruit notes compared to the wash and the honey going to be in between and with honey there can be different variables in honeys in terms of the color change so we would prefer these coffee as white honey yellow honey red honey black honey so the darker it is the longer the fermentation and the closer it is when uh, in taste to natural so these can be tough to identify because sometimes it can be quite clean and also sweet at the same time so um for beginners, the best thing to do is um, taste. So taste the coffee that you know how they were processed, um, especially if it's from the same um, origin, same farm even better, and same variety would be even better. Try to taste um, them side by side, brew side by side, cup side by side, and that will really help you um, building the experience in tasting coffees with different processing. For the pro, when you get green coffee, when you do sample roasting, or when you get sample from a bunch of different places, um, try to blind cup them and make the game of yourself um, with your staff, looking at um, how these thing, how these coffee can taste difference, um, especially if they're from the again same origin, same farm, same variety processed in a different way. If you have that chance, try it out. That would be really nice. As, and also for the pro and for everyone as well, um, right now we are in the coffee processing craze. Lots of different processing methods um, coming out. Uh, recently, carbonic macerations has been very popular um, in which they pump ox um, carbon dioxide into the tank. So you have a carbon dioxide rich um, environment. So this is taken from wine fermentation. And it can cause the coffee to taste quite differently. It can be, it can be um, very exciting in terms of different type of um, fermented taste, different types of fruit notes. Um, and it can be challenging to identify the carbonic maceration natural versus carbonic maceration wash, meaning they wash it after the coffee has been fermented in, in the tank. Um, there are many different experimental fermentation going on right now hot thermic fermentations which the coffee is going to be tasting more like um, dark caramel where they actually heat the cherries to caramelize the sugar before they um, go into dry natural and then depulp 
and so um, those one will taste more of a like burnt caramel type, but actually not burnt from roasting, but more of a burning of the sugar um, with the coffee themselves, or cold fermentation, where is the coffee being um, fermented? in a tank in an under control temperature at 6 to 10 degree. Anaerobic fermentation is another one and can be quite challenging to identify between a 72 hours anaerobic fermentations versus 144 hours fermentation versus 720 which is a month or or one month of fermentation. And Usually with anaerobic fermentation, the longer the fermentation is, the more fermenty it will go. You start tasting um, vinegar, you start tasting balsamic, you start tasting um, dill, pickle, uh, sometimes even very alcoholic in terms of taste, like tequila, gin, um, very winey at times. So anaerobic fermentation can be um, also challenging in terms of Picking out, is it an Arabic wash, an Arabic fermentation? What, how, how long? Uh, and but it's very interesting, and you should try them all if when you have a chance. Yeah. All right. So you can find me at Coffee Reply on Instagram. You can find Rogue Wave Coffee at Rogue underscore Wave underscore Coffee on Instagram or Rogue Wave Coffee on Facebook. On our website is roguewavecoffee.ca. Um, for a closing remark, <laughs> takeaway is try to, if you have a chance, try to taste all the processing, as many process as you can. Um, this is not just because so that you can experience it, but more about trying to find a coffee that you enjoy, what type of process you enjoy the most. And search out for some innovative um, from, uh, processing as well. So, and personal tips, drink what you like to drink. So that's me, <laughs> drink what you enjoy. And good luck with the leaderboard. You're going to have fun and it's very exciting. So enjoy the ride or I guess enjoy the wave. Bye. <laughs>